Good evening, friends. Well, they decided to start with the shortest guy, so here I am. I'd like to begin with sharing a couple of quotes with you. One which has been profound in me developing a sense of inner peace and contentment, and one which may just be contributory to the discontentment of many. Life will give you whichever experience is most helpful for the evolution of our consciousness. How do you know it's the experience you need? Because it's the experience you are having at the moment. Eckhart Tolle. During and following some of my darkest moments, this taught me acceptance. It humbled me in the realization that these moments, these experiences, were here to bring greater awareness of my flaws and to help me become a better person. The second quote is by Tony Robbins. We are defined by the stories we tell ourselves. That is if we choose to be defined in any way. Definitions are, of course, a construct of the human mind. Nature doesn't need any definitions. Would a mountain introduce itself as a mountain? Would a bee declare that it flies and makes honey for a living? When you hear the pigeon make its familiar call of hoo 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 outside your window, do you think it worries about how it sounds in front of others? Only if each were afflicted with the complexities of the human mind. The ego, the identity. Nature just is. It moves without any noticeable concern of past experiences or what may happen in the future or how other beings see or think of it. When we, as humans, look deeper than the mind, we are nature too. It's those stories we tell ourselves that so often close or obstruct the portal to that tranquility. Then the experiences come along to give us the opportunity to have a story clear out. The trouble with that is, the more defining our stories are, the more they form our identity, the harder those experiences may hit, occasionally with devastating impact. Indeed, when we become overly attached to or directed by our stories, life seems to send something to dismantle them. An accident a financial collapse, a relationship breakdown. As Rocky Balboa said, the world will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. Nobody is going to hit as hard as life. It ain't about how hard you can hit, but about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Tonight, fellow humans, I'm going to share with you a simple little process to help prepare you to keep moving forward when the hits come. It'll help you flow more fluid like with life's currents. Just as Bruce Lee said, be water. So why do we hold on to these identities? Well, the human mind likes closure and familiarity. It likes to box things off. Even when someone seems to be living a perpetually unpleasant existence, such as suffering depression or anxiety, that can become part of their story, their identity. Even though they know that they're going to wake up feeling down the next day, they know that. Doing something about it may be unfamiliar to them. Therefore, 
the fear of not knowing how that looks may be so overwhelming that it renders them to stick with the familiarity of their current state, however bad that may be. You see then, that our identities can play a part in self-sabotage. And this has been my experience in the past. I had a realization some years ago that one of my most compelling stories was dealing with the struggle. I was quite proud in telling people that whatever storms came my way, I could get through it. With that, I was virtually saying to the universe, bring on the storms. Then I realized just how detrimental to me this was. If life wasn't sending things to cause me to struggle, I would create it. I realized that it was detrimental to my relationships and meant that I had virtually no chance of creating the inner peace, love for self and success that I desired. It took me to have failed businesses, come close to bankruptcy, and even have to be saved by a friend from homelessness to take the actions and make the changes necessary. And it was from that place that this process was created. That place of darkness from which I built a more solid foundation. Because we're short of time here this evening and I have limited time with you, I'm just going to give you an overview of the process on the slides so you can understand it. You'll then have a handout which you can take away and do the process fully in your own time. Here we go. Step one your identities. Think about all your identities. How do you represent yourself? How do you see yourself? List any, anything you can think of. Your identities may be role-based. Are you a parent, a carer, a friend, a community leader? Could be occupation. Think about when you meet someone for the first time. What is typically one of the first questions that comes up in conversation? What do you do? Are you a doctor, a shop assistant, a teacher, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker? And what does that mean to you? Could be achievements. Are you a gold medal athlete? A best-selling author? A prom queen, perhaps? Think about your character traits, your habits, your beliefs about yourself and the world. Are you a hard worker, <laughs> a joker, an introvert? Or perhaps you think, I am this, or I can't do that. Whenever this happens, this will be the outcome. And anything else that you think is relevant. It may also help you to ask somebody who knows you very well to state some of your identities as they see it. Bear in mind as well, many of your identities will have been created by yourself. But some of them may have been imposed on you or created by the behaviours or words of others, which can be quite unhelpful. Once you've listed all of those, pick out the three that you feel are most significant in driving your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. For tonight, though, just keep one in mind for going through the process. Step two, stick or twist. Just like a game of pontoon, this allows you to stick with the hand that you've got or twist and look at something else. Perhaps one of your identities is so strong that you want to leave it as it is at the moment. Maybe it would cause so much pain and upheaval to seek to change that. Bear in mind that what we're not doing here is seeking to remove an identity altogether, but we're looking to moderate it. 
back in 2017, I was at a very well-known personal de development seminar amongst thousands of other people. One of the exercises we were given to do was to note down two things, two unresolved issues that required a decision or a commitment from us. I knew that one of the decisions I had to make was about my marriage of 18 years. Would I stay in it, give it 100% regardless of return and allow myself to be vulnerable again? Or would I walk away from it with the best intentions of all involved in mind? My identities as a husband, a father, and a provider to four sons made that decision all the more difficult. And it was a decision I just could not make at that time. It caused me to be deeply upset that I knew I would have to make that decision sooner rather than later. But in that moment, I chose to twist. And that's what step two is for. Step three, the upsides. How may each of these identities benefit you in the past? Perhaps they helped you meet a certain person and get into a relationship. Maybe they led to a career. Perhaps you were able to fit in or even excel in a particular environment. Maybe they just kept you safe. Those reasons, those upsides, will be what have kept those identities within you and kept you attached to them. If you were that pigeon or identified as that pigeon that was spoke about earlier, the benefit of that would be that you didn't give two hoo-hoos about what other people thought of you. <laughs> but sometimes maybe puzzling to understand how these identities have benefited you. There will be some benefit though, otherwise you wouldn't keep it. There was a lady I went through this process with a couple of years ago, and she discovered through it that one of her identities was as the daughter of alcoholics. She struggled to understand how this had benefited her. With more time and introspection, she then realized that this identity was facilitating and inwardly justifying similar behavior to that of her parents. When the going got tough, she would hit the ball and felt okay about it because that was her identity. This was a deep and profound realization for her. The upsides will be why you've hung on to these identities and reinforced them for so long. Step four, the downsides. How may each of these identities detrimentally affected you or held you back in the past? Maybe they led to the end of a relationship. Maybe they caused you to allow certain opportunities to go by you. Maybe you lost out on a career or didn't try something that you could have been good at as a result. Then, perhaps more importantly, how may these identities be holding you back right now or what you want to achieve in the future? Step five, challenge them. This step is about deciding on and taking actions which can help you to moderate these identities, reduce your attachment to them, and over-representation by them. What can you do that may even be virtually opposite to your current identity? Perhaps you see yourself as an independent person, having done everything for yourself all your life, so strong. How may it help you to be more collaborative Perhaps to challenge that identity, you could pick a couple of specific tasks that you've always done yourself and actually allow somebody else to do them for you. Maybe you see yourself as not a people person or an introvert. Perhaps take up something that requires you to interact more with people, even something as extreme as speaking. Maybe you see yourself as overweight. 
then look at something that you can do that fit people do. And sport or an activity. Back in 2014, I was overweight and out of shape. And I decided it was time to get back in condition. So I took up Taekwondo. I kind of figured that by doing Taekwondo, that would incentivize me to get fitter. And being fitter would improve my martial arts. It was a positive loop. With some simple tweaks in my diet and doing some workouts that I found on a popular video sharing site, I lost three and a half stone in around four months. I then went on to win medals and trophies at both national and international level. That's the power of considering the person that you want to become, rather than just moving away from your current position. What we're trying to do here by challenging our identities is get on life's variable continuum and become more fluid-like. We're not looking to remove the identity altogether. By challenging our identities, it helps us to get on that variable, variable continuum rather than the fixed binary position. Finally then, friends, how may your approach to things change and the results you get improve by taking some of the actions you've considered throughout this process. Remember, nature just is. Be more like nature. Thank you so much for listening. Go live a life of greater freedom and fluidity. Thank you.